Good evening everyone and welcome to another unboxing stream. I see a Mixie FPS, CP The Brick and Mr. Cherby's joining in at the very beginning. Thanks guys for joining in so early. So yeah, um, let's talk about the very first item that I'm going to be unboxing for the evening. There we go, some tune. So it wasn't just the ARC-60 and the Sunset 80 that I received. I also received a special package from Zenclack. If you guys were part of that stream, I think it was a, I think it was the build stream for this board where Zenclack joined in. And I was complaining that the GMK trays, they're, you know, they uh, attract roaches. And, but, the, but then at the same time, if you upgrade to something else like a JTK tray or stuff, you can't exactly keep the bandolier. In stock, plastic GMK trays. So these are designed to be straight up replacements for the biodegradable ones that GMK sends. So I got two of them. So you get 11 for the price of two, or you get two for the price of 11 bucks. So let's check them out. Let's check them out relatively quickly. There we go. This is what they look like. They seem almost bigger than what, what's actually available. But this is definitely stiffer. See, it doesn't like break or like anything like that. Here, let me try and find a bandolier here. Did I miss the keyboard unboxing? Yeah, that was an hour ago. <laughs> no, I just started, dude. Literally just started. But yeah, um, you can usually figure out where I am because I like to start off with accessories first. You know, so yeah. So this is GMK Red Samurai that I bought off of Drop. There we go, let's see if it actually fits and if it retains its shape. Like I've thrown out all of the biodegradable ones already. Hey, looks like it does. Yeah, I think the, the biodegradable ones have like another thin layer. So if you guys want to save that the next time you buy one, it should work with this. But yeah, this seems to retain to retain its shape just fine. I got this random key set here, this random beige set, all cherry profile and all that. So let's just throw throw on a few of these. Okay, I like how it seems to be pretty deep. All right, let's try this out. Do the keycaps stay in place when, they, when they're all shaken up? Let's try it. Oh yeah, check it out guys. From the looks of it, it's, I think it's about like half, half a U2 wide on, on like the corners. So the keycaps, even if you put all one U, they still kind of slide around here and there. So they too still tend to get messed up. But at least when you shake them, when you shake them, it's actually not too bad. So it's pretty good. Vertex or Click Clack sent me the board first and then a few days later, this came and I was like, wait, why, why couldn't they have just sent them both together? But here we go, this one, I suspect these are switches. But camping life, go camping, very cute. They are, yes, they are a linear switch, interesting. Specs on it are, it is, the top is modified palm, the bottom is also modified palm. So palm on palm with a P3 stem, 13.1 millimeters. The spring is 20 millimeters, long gold spring. Actuation force is 59G bottom out, but since this is a longer spring, I'm, I'm expecting this to feel more like a 65. There is no factory lubrication. So yeah, let's check it out. So these have no lube at all. Here we go. Now uh, this is probably one of the nicest packagings that I've seen for a Switch. It's, it's even got QR codes.
Hmm, pretty definitely camping inspired. Let's see, how does that feel? That's actually pretty smooth. That's pretty smooth for no factory lube. Looks like there is no logo on the front either, so you wouldn't be able to know who like made them. No spring ping either. This is great. This is really good. I'll probably still lube them if I have, have the time. I'm hoping to do a build stream this coming Wednesday. But yeah, it's not it's not really uh working out. Let's see this. So yeah, if you guys bought a Vertex Angle R1 or R2, you can recognize the packaging. It's it looks awfully familiar. Let's see. What's over on this box first? What if I just want the iPhone Pro? <laughs> it's so funny. Let's see, looks like they've got two plate foams and a PCB foam. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, that is very much the same style box as the Vertex Angle. Though I feel like this one's slightly taller. Let's see, I have the Aloe colorway. Oh, this is such premium packaging. So 1 to 1.05 1 to 1 kilograms, aluminum 6063, T5. T5 is the screw that you will need. In fact, I believe that they include the tool in here as well. There we go. Ooh. There it is. There's the board right there. And there's the tool. There it is. That's the T5 tool. Let's take a look at the PCBs. That's the solderable one. And this is the hot swap one. Cool. Okay. Here we go. Let's check it out. That Arc 60 solderable PCB. Multi layout support. Um, microcontroller is a. Looks like it is an ARM type microcontroller. That's good. Daughter board port is over here. There seems to be a reset mechanism here as well. No underglow or in switch lighting that I can see. This is probably the first PCB that I've seen that actually states that it supports Vial. QMK via and Vial. What else do I see here? It seems like there's like an ESD protection circuit there, but usually the ESD protection circuit is located on the daughter board. Oh, look, you've got some in-switch LED support, but only for caps lock. So it's supported for both the stepped and regular caps lock positions. All right, let's see. Let's go look at the hot swap one. It's not gonna be any different, to be honest. I'll have to double check with Vertex just to make sure that the hot swap one has the software already programmed onto it. Let's see, the hot swap sockets are made by, made by KL, okay. Both PCBs look very well made. Even the Vertex Angle R1 and R2 PCBs were also very well made. Yeah, oh yeah, I forgot to mention that. If you guys look at the hot swap one, you'll see that there are no tabs here. This one you actually have to use a plate for. But if you go to the soldered one, if you go to the soldered one that I pulled out, here I'll just pull out halfway, you'll notice that there are tabs all around it. This one allows for a plateless build. I might start with hot swap just so I can figure out what switches I like. Like, I'm definitely gonna be using these first, but what if I don't like them, right? If you guys watched any of my Vertex Angle build streams, you know that I was very frustrated with not being able to make it sound good. So yeah, maybe I'll play it safe first by starting with Hot Swap and then going from there. Arc Tools. Plate Gaskets, nice. Then there's PCB Gasket. So for the Hot Swap, no, for the solderable and for the regular. Extra screws, excellent. I'm glad that they're very largely labeled. Bump-ons, cool. 
Here, I will hold on to that because I'll be pulling out the case soon. Alignment pins, there we go. Oh, it's not just labeled, it's also like, there's a short description here as well, awesome. Use for positioning the PCB, ap apply to the four corners of the bottom case, very nice. There's another little thing here, I think this is the plate. It is a, that seems to be an aluminum plate. See, you can notice that on the plate, that's where the tabs are at. Let's see, I've had some bad luck with plates lately, so we are just going to test fit the plate. There, let's see, will this plate fit these switches? Hey, fits just fine. Did not have to push very hard. Yep, that seems to work just fine. Okay, so JWK is a little harder to pull out. To put, there we go. All right, now we have Gaterons. Yep, fits just fine as well. Okay, and last but not the least, these are I think these are high move switches. No, these are Durox. These are Durox actually. Okay. I don't have to worry about tight fitting switches anymore. Let's put that in there. And now let's take out this 60. All right. Green, this is my second green board in my collection and the only board that is light green. As, as you guys can see, there is a vacuum wrap around it. Oh, I love how they've they've already sealed away the daughter board. It's similar to the vertex angle as well. Center mount USB-C, beautiful curves along the corners. I'm gonna put the bump ons on. And there's like lots of parts, but we'll take it apart just to make sure everything is good. But first, bump-ons. All right, got them all in. With two spare bump-ons to go. Excellent. We'll use the included T5 tool. Let's take a quick peek at what this board looks like. Um, they did send me a a precaution saying I, I have to be careful with taking apart the case not to over tighten just because there's a chance that um, I can strip the bolts there we go that's the top half right there do I see any defects of sorts? Okay, I see some slight discoloration over on the screw hole over there, but no biggie. Like I can see some of the silver aluminum that's underneath it, but it's still mostly green. Oh, okay, so on this other end too, I see di discoloration in the anodization as well. And that hole seems to be a little yeah, it doesn't seem to be drilled as cleanly as the others. So that's interesting. How about on the bottom? What does the bottom look like? I see some slight streaking across it, but it's very, 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 very slight. Well, let's take apart this bottom bit and see what happens. See, it looks like I may have to take off the center weight first. That is an aluminum weight, by the way. It's not like a stainless steel or anything like that. It looks like it is very well manufactured. I don't see any scratches on the back side of the weight. Uh, once again, the screw holes seem to be kind of not as clean as the rest of the case. Okay, these look like they're they're well done. All right, let's take a look at that daughter board. Does it really have all of the ESD protection and overcurrent and over voltage. There we go, yep, this has no scratches, no anodization defects that I can see. Looks pretty good. Yes it does. There we go. 
not bad. No defects on this either. And there is the daughter board. That does not look to be a typical AIO3 daughter board. I'm not familiar with too many of these parts, but it looks to have, uh, that's a fuse. So a fuse, a fuse does current, right? So yeah, it's got over current support. And there we go. There's one actually labeled ESD. So ESD and over current. Um, I would suspect this last one is over voltage, but I would not be sure. Okay. At least it's got the primary one. It's got ESD protection for sure. All right, so, so far from what I've seen, the board is still very highly manufactured. It's very, um, very high degree of quality control. Though I did notice compared to the other click clack boards that I've been sent, even, even against the Vertex Angle R2, it seems as though this one does not have as many, um, what do you call that? Is, is not, Okay, so if the vertex angle had a score of like 100%, I'd say this one's probably more like a 95. And in fact, like the stuff that I was pointing out was so minute, it didn't really matter all that much. This is the ARC-60, which I'll be building this coming Wednesday. Um, so far, initial impressions of the board is that this is a very well-made board. Uh, of course, I can't really respond to anything about how does it feel, how does it sound quite yet, but we'll find out this coming Wednesday. I did find a few um, manufacturing defects compared with other click clack boards that have been sent to me in the past. So, you know, a little worrisome, but nothing to be afraid of. They were all mainly just like anodization defects around the screw areas. And I noticed that some of the holes, which, which where the screws were at, weren't as clean cut as a majority of them. But overall, still seems like a very, very decent board. You probably won't notice any of those issues that I talked about unless you are doing a review like me. I feel like compared to the Vertex packaging, this one, this one isn't very impressive. Good luck, it's just the box. Designed by Fox Lab since 2017. That box, Fox. And when you actually open it up, once you open it up, it, it's not it's not like the Vertex where everything is cut out nicely. Instead, they give you a carrying case, which in many ways I do like better. Because right now, if I ever have to transport my Arc, or if I ever have to transport my um, Vertex, I need to carry the whole case with it, right? But here we go, fancy little case, and it is heavy, oh my word. Look at that. Oh, that's what it's supposed to look like. You guys can check it out. Designed by Fox Lab. It is, let's see what else can I say about it first. It's got fancy LEDs above the arrow cluster. Um, the weight itself is really pretty as well. It's got alignment bars to make sure that you put your plate and PCB assembly in correctly. This is Poron strips. It's got a daughter board as well, very nice. These are the layouts that are available. Looks like it's an F13 board. A couple colorways available, obsidian black, moonlight silver, Bordeaux red, very cool. All right, let's see how this guy looks. Ooh. Lots of literature here, it's a nice little card. Card with the Velcro. What is this? This looks to be a gasket. Okay, these are the gasket strips. And you can choose between what looks to be some kind of a foam versus some kind of a silicon. Okay, cool. Yeah, I wish that, th that this was labeled. Okay, what's next here? They've got a user manual, nice! You don't see too many boards come with the user manual now. And it's available in both English and Mandarin. Excellent. This one has stabilizer shims and more gaskets. Okay, well, that's nice. Let's see, the first one has PCB, okay. Oh, maybe I would have preferred to see this in a 
ESD protected bag. But I guess this works too. Oh, plate and PCB, okay. So here we go, this is the polycarb plate. PCB, Sunset PCB, all hot swap with in-switch lighting, I can see. These hot swap sockets are also kale, similar to the ARC-60. Daughterboard connector is right underneath the aero cluster. It's also using a ARM microcontroller, that's good. Oh look, there seems to be two places that you can install the daughterboard. Cool. Oh wait, I believe this is the daughter board for the, for the USB-C port and this one's for the LED lighting, if I'm not mistaken. And it seems that they put additional protections on this port as well. I see a fuse right there. That's usually, usually for overcurrent protection. The PCB is kind of like this matte, matte look on it. Looks to be very easily scratched. Like I'm seeing over here, there's a bunch of little tiny scratch marks already. I wonder if it's from the plate just scratching against it during transport. This one's significantly lighter. It's probably additional plates. No, it's actually foams. I see we've got extra rubber feet. This one's labeled extra rubber feet. And we've got, looks to be some type of PCB foam, but it's so small. Here's your plate foam right here. See, I think this is the, according to their, according to their kitting, this has got to be the, the poron plate foam. This is poron plate foam. And this one, the PCB foam is IXPE. And then there's the case foam, which is also poron, poron case foam. Here we go, let's take a look at the Sunset 80. I don't know what color I got, but hopefully it is not black, because I'm tired of black boards. No more black boards. Silver, yay, okay, I, do I have a silver TKL? I don't, I don't have a silver TKL. Oh, look at that, that is beautiful. Oh look, that weight, you, you're like seeing spotting there, because that is a strip of plastic that's on it. It's got a couple of air bubbles, but that's fine. I won't peel it off quite yet. And the daughter board is, it looks to be the same size as an AI-03 daughter board, but it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. It looks the same size in terms of where the screws go in, but the layout is completely off. On the bottom right here, on the bottom left, it says Sunset 80% designed by Keep Calm and Auto. And then at the very bottom, at bottom it says Fox Lab. Let's take it apart and see what it looks like. Oh, let, let me put on the feet first. And while we're here, I can already see some very slight streaking in the aluminum. Very, very slight. And it doesn't go all the way across the board, just like maybe like an inch over here and all that. No, nothing bad at all. There we go. Oh, interesting. I just unscrewed that and a bunch of metal shavings came out of the screw hole. Not sure if you guys can see it. Oh yeah, yes, you should be able to see it on screen. These are all like little metal shavings that came out of this, uh, that came out of the screw hole. Yep, it didn't happen any more times. Oh wait, it did, it did. It's a couple more screws. Oh man. Yeah, that's not fun. Oh yeah, I can see. There are, there's some of them, especially the ones on the top. The screw hole isn't, isn't drilled very cleanly. Let's take a look. Any defects that are noticeable. Oh yeah, here's the daughterboard or the cable I was talking about earlier. 
Yep, I see more streaking on the inside, especially with the with the blocker here. Oh, earlier someone was asking if I have a TKL with a blocker, with wind key blockers. Well, now I do. <laughs> earlier I did not, but now I do. Oh, there's some discoloration of the anodization over here in the corner as well. Yeah, also on the inner edge here, I see some streaking. So the anodization really isn't like top tier. But unless you're looking as closely as me, you're not gonna see it. Oh yeah, I can def definitely see that screw hole isn't, isn't very cleanly cut. And more streaking on the bottom, more streaking of the anodization. So just comparing this to the ARC-60 from earlier, even though the ARC-60 had streaking as well, the, this seems to be a bigger offender, both um, literally and figuratively. <laughs> There we go. So this one, you can't really tell if there's any streaking or anything like that, just because it's... I, I don't know what this process is called. Is this still is this still anodization? I don't know, but it looks really cool. There we go. There is the weight. So that's very interesting. As you guys can see, the USB-C port is actually part of the weight. Yeah, the weight seems very well done. Are these scratches? Yes, there are some slight scratches on the corner here. Where the where the weight meets the board. Okay. This is production. But keep in mind guys. Look at what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the corners of the weight right here. How often are you going to take apart your board and look at it, right? So I guess like my major critique of this board so far is not so much the board itself, but the packaging of the PCB. The PCB was just in a giant envelope. I would have preferred to see that in some kind of an ESD protected sleeve. Other than that, I, I actually quite like this board. Yeah, the GB will happen, well, according to the group buy page, the Geek Hack page, it was supposed to be done in November, but <laughs> still not there yet. I'll probably build this maybe closer to the start of the group buy, but since the Vertex angle, since, since the Vertex arc is already on sale right now, that's the one that I have to do first. Okay, so just as a quick TLDR of my initial impressions of this, um, it is a very well-built board, very heavy. I really like the weight design right there. Um, I love how, I actually really like how the USB-C port is part of the weight itself. I think that's pretty cool. Um, I love how the back looks, oh, too, too bright. I love how the back looks, this is great. I wish I would have gotten like a darker weight though, just to have a little bit more contrast. But I guess this is good. And then, let's see, what else can I say about this? Um, I did notice more anodization streaking on the, on the inside of the board, but you know, that's fine. You won't see it. And none of the anodization streaking was bad, right? Like you would have to look at it as closely as I'm looking at it now to like even see them. But overall, it seems like a pretty decent board. A um, couple other things I noticed was the packaging. Like, like my biggest issue with the with the whole experience was the packaging. I didn't like how the PCB was just in a envelope. It should have been in an ESD bag. That that kind of annoyed me a bit. And the fact that it was all packed. Here, let me show it to you guys. The fact that all of all of them was just packed really tightly into this little little crevice here. It was really hard to take them all out. And I was worried that with, you know, if, if you pulled it out too fast or if you weren't careful, you could bend a few things here. <laughs> so yeah, just um, maybe, maybe better packaging for future revisions. <laughs> so at the start of the stream, I did another unboxing. I like to unbox small things up to the larger things. The 
the the two main attractions for this stream was the arc 60 and the sunset 80 but the very first thing that i unboxed was plastic gmk trays from zen clack so if you guys are hoping to to um still utilize your your gmk bandolier um definitely look to buy these these are a hard plastic but 11 bucks for two pretty neat we then shifted over to talking about the arc 60 I got my ARC-60 in aloe colorway. Looked pretty neat. Yeah, I, I'm always in love with the Vertex's packaging. And I noticed that this time around, they started labeling, labeling and having instructions on each of the little baggies. So you will not be confused at all. That's super, super premium, super premium. I haven't built a 60 in, in a very long time. So I'm pretty excited to build this this coming Wednesday. Vertex was also nice enough to send me switches camping style switches so they're in the gmk camping colorway unfortunately i don't have any of the camping sets so i'll just have to find something else green to go with it and then we also talked about the sunset 80 which i just finished unboxing both these boards are seem really really great and i'm excited to build them and see if they sound just as good and type just as well but yeah, thanks guys for joining in. As I said earlier, we'll be doing the ARC-60 build this coming Wednesday. The ARC-60 is actually for sale already. So if you go all the way to Click Clack, you can, you can still buy a few of them. I've been told that the aloe variant, the one that I have right now is already out of stock, but a couple of them are still available. So make sure you check them out. But yeah, thanks guys for joining in and I'll see you when I see you. Goodbye everyone, hope you have a good rest of your week.